Look, this is your team. And this is you. You're all heading in the same direction. But what happens if someone joins who's different from the rest? Initially, it's an uncomfortable feeling, whether you like it or not. After all, we prefer to associate with people who resemble ourselves. So it doesn't become easier if there are more and more colleagues who think and act differently from us. And before you know it, you've become part of a team with a lot of diversity. People from different backgrounds, each with different ideas about how things should be. In such a situation, it often occurs that subgroups arise in the team. That's because we don't get on so easily with them, but also because they prefer to deal with colleagues who resemble themselves. The breakdown of such a group is called fragmentation. Fragmentation is something that occurs in almost every organization. Sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. Colleagues from other cultures are often noticeably different. But how about the less visible differences? Team A thinks it's better than Team B. The better educated will hardly mix with the less educated. Departments fight each other for budgets. Also, people who are alike in terms of style of character often seek each other out. For example, you see that all the macho types are in leadership functions or everyone in a particular team has a lot of empathy. That is fragmentation. And the best place to see it in action is in the company restaurant, where everyone always sits with their own subgroup. Now you may be thinking, why is that bad? Indeed, a little fragmentation isn't so bad. However, fragmentation tends to reinforce itself. If no one intervenes, the group will break up into even more subgroups, each fighting for their own interests. It then becomes us against them, and those with the biggest mouth will succeed. And that really is a problem. In the world of today, a fragmented organization will miss the boat, because all the energy spent on internal struggles is not directed to the purpose for which the organization exists. This not only damages the organization's customers, but also the organization itself. And of course, it costs a lot of money. Fragmentation also harms teams, because a team can only function when information is exchanged. Through fragmentation, the exchange of information falters or even comes to a complete halt. Fragmentation harms everyone working in such an organization. When people are excluded, when prejudice flourishes, if you can't say what you think, then it's a pretty horrible experience and also means you can never do your job well. Fragmentation leads to underutilization of human resources and a waste of talent. Those who are good at the old boys network get the prestigious project or nice promotion, while someone else might have been much more suitable. Fragmentation is everywhere, in organizations, in families, in neighborhoods. And we see it every night on the news. Does that mean that fragmentation is our fate? Are we as people made in such a way that differences will always cause trouble? No, that's not the case. Differences can mean a group is going to perform worse, but it can also ensure a group is precisely going to perform better. The mutual differences are not glossed over. They are expressly sought out and turned into an advantage. This way of working, where everyone's talent is utilized and all viewpoints are heard, is called inclusion. <laughs>